Can we have one more round of applause for both of our advisors of the year this year? My name is Cole Wittenhans and I'm your high school rep. Um, and tonight we get to continue the recognition. Um, we just saw some advisors of the years, which I, I agree with Susan. It's, Susan, it's really awesome to talk about people who are making change now, doing things right now uh, that make our schools, uh, our communities a better place. As part of the high school and middle level representative uh, job responsibilities, we get to take that a step further and think about legacy and think about the longevity and people who have been doing this for a while. Can we just have a, a, a raise of hands if you've been an ASB advisor or involved in activities for five years? Keep your hand raised for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 20 years. Let's give them a round of applause. Congratulations. As part of the criteria for our Waka Hall of Fame, 20 years of service is one of the elements. We also look for individuals who have served as an advisor on a camp staff or as a teacher or secretary, someone who has been a Waka, NASC, Latispa, or middle level regional uh, delegate and or presenter, um, and has served as a past conference chair, hosted a WASC or AWSL, as we now call it, fall conference, Waka, uh, or middle level regionals. Out of, those character, or out of those qualifications, we had a wonderful group of nominees, and tonight it is our pleasure to welcome the class of 2016 to your Waka Hall of Fame. Our first inductee today um, is our legacy inductee. She's no longer here with us, but tonight we are really excited to honor the first member of your 2016 Waka Hall of Fame, Miss Susan Jernigan. We'd like to ask Bill Kent to come up and speak on her behalf. Also joining us tonight is Susan's family, Joan Jernigan, Dale Garrett, Karen Garrett, Emily Fosheim, and Bernie Lagaska. They're down here in front. And also East Valley Principal Dottie Say and Assistant Principal Kayla Crow. I met Susan when she came to East Valley in 1990. It was evident from the start that she was a remarkable person and she became my assistant with ASB during the first year. When we learned of the WASC conference, it was without question that we wanted to take our student leaders. Following the conference, Susan began talking about creating a leadership class and we began to lobby the administration. Susan began teaching the leadership program at East Valley the following year with support from the Fortins and others from CISPUS. Without her, the leadership program would be years behind. Susan developed the program and added our Mr. EV program to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. She was also instrumental in bringing the Renaissance Recognition Program to East Valley and was able to attend the National Conference in Las Vegas, having won a registration from Justin's at one of our WACA conferences. Susan worked tirelessly for the students of East Valley. She worked with the WACA board to continue the tradition of our state conference. And unfortunately, her health required her to adjust her workload. Yet she still dedicated herself to her students. By sheer force of will, she saw through the completion of our 2015 Mr. EV competition and public presentation before succumbing to breast cancer. She is a role model for our students to emulate. At this time, Karen Garrett would like to say a few words. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank the members of WACA for honoring my sister with this award. As time goes on, we still continue to be amazed by her accomplishments in her professional life. 
I know that she loved her time on the walk aboard and all the crazy times she told me about at conventions. <laughs> Teachers, whoa. Uh, I, Susan loved her kids and was so very proud of them. To hear the joy in her voice, see that smile on her face, and that infectious laugh that she had as she spoke about her students and what they were doing was so very special. I know that she would be honored by receiving this award and also a little embarrassed. She did what she did because she loved it, and you were all a very important part of that. Thank you. This job's fun. Next up, uh, we would like to welcome Miss uh, Mary Benedict to induct our other 2016 inductee, Mr. Bob Jones. Mary? This is a wonderful day because I have the opportunity to introduce to you a man that I love and admire. Bob Jones is an icon in the city of Auburn. People say Bob Jones is Auburn High School, and that's pretty much the truth. I've had the great joy of working with Bob for 30 years, and I'm honored to share what a wonderful human being he is with you and why he's such an exceptional addition to the Waka Hall of Fame. Auburn's one of those districts that started with one high school for 100 years, and then over the last 20 years added, th added in to a total of three. Um, so across the district, Bob has been the mentor to every activity coordinator that has come through the other buildings, and there have been man many. He's helped us all to know how to do our job, how to do the budget, how to build student programs, and it's a crazy job with an insane amount of moving parts, as you all know. And the only one that we could go to that could teach us, because there's only one person per building, was Bob. He mentors us frequently, willingly, with patience. And he also makes it so much fun. His selflessness has literally helped every student in Auburn over the, over the decades. Bob has advocated and facilitated student leadership for more excuse me, more than two decades. He works tirelessly to help students grow and accomplish incredible things at Auburn High School and in the Auburn community. Bob's philosophy is to say yes more than he has to say no. Bob is at school approximately 360 out of 365 days of the year, opening the building for students and community members, running events, and helping students achieve their goals. Bob works harder than anyone I know. He is always a positive attitude, and full of huge laughs. As activity coordinator of Auburn High School, Bob has created a school culture and a climate that lives and breathes caring for students. Bob's enormous laugh, his tremendous sense of humor, and love of working hard and doing what is right serves as a barometer for all staff and students at Auburn High School. Everyone adores Bob. Former students and staff are drawn to this generous human being, I mean, who else our age has 1,567 Facebook friends? And by the way, that number went up 10 since this award was announced. We talk about taking risks and encouraging students to take risks. Well, Bob does this too. Because of his attendance at the WACA conference over the years, he has mastered and performed the Macarena in public. Bob is a living example of servant leadership. He's a person of extraordinary authority and influence in Auburn. Bob's life is It's a Wonderful Life, and Bob is Jimmy Stewart. If you work on a project with Bob in the community and ask for things, as we often have to do, and you mention that you are working with Bob Jones, the answer 100% of the time is, Bob Jones, yes, done. I will do anything for Bob Jones. Three years ago in the fall, I sat next to Bob at the activities workshop, we were asked to list three adjectives that described us and ultimately narrow it down to one. Bob's value was to work hard. 
Bob does work hard on a daily basis, and in doing so, he makes the lives of staff and students everywhere better. Albert Einstein said, only a life in service to others is a life worth living, and I believe he was describing Bob. And then there's Bob's heart, his huge heart. He has taught all of us how to live right, to love what we do, to speak honestly, to laugh often, to say yes to kids, and to work hard. Thank you, Bob, for showing us how to do it, for your life of service, and for adding years to so many people's lives. Congratulations on your induction into the Waka Hall of Fame. sure how you follow that. <laughs> first of all, um, on the lighter side of things, I need you to know this is not the first WACA award that I've ever received. And I don't know the exact year, but my mentor, Mary Benedict, who brought me to my first WACA conference, or WACA conference, convinced me that I should play in the WACA golf tournament. Um, we played at Semiyama on a rainy day. Uh, my golf game was a little rough. That's basically where I played the whole day. I had mud up to my knees when we returned. And at the end, Mary said, we need to turn in our scorecard. <laughs> There's no reason to turn in our scorecard, Mary. We're not going to win anything. And uh, I'm really not sure I want anybody to see it. Oh, no, they give away door prizes, things like that. Turn it in. So we turned in our scorecards. And at the banquet, where we gave out the awards for the golf tournament, um, I don't remember the order, but all of a sudden there was an award for the highest gross score <laughs> for men. Well, my score was certainly gross, and I won. <laughs> uh, the, but the awesome thing about WACA and about leadership and about the people who are involved in this organization is that my plaque, which I still have, and for many years was on my wall, says whack a golf tournament, and that's it. Doesn't say highest gross store. <laughs> so whenever anybody have asked me about it, I've just said that I won an award at the whack a golf tournament. I don't remember exactly what I shot that day, but I won an award. <laughs> so, first of all, I'll tell you that I am a little uncomfortable being here. Um, I hope that means that it's a lesson of leadership that I've learned, um, and I hope that it means that I've understood that this isn't about me, and it never has been. Uh, as I learned from all of you over all of the years of doing this, um, I have the best job in the school. I believe I have the best job in the state. And I believe I have the best job that anybody could have, uh, the chance to work with kids. Um, I get to work, I have many mentors uh, that have helped me do that, and, and I looked up the definition of, of mentor, and it says an experienced and trusted advisor, when it's used as a noun and when used as a verb, to advise or train someone, especially a younger colleague. 1995 was my first WACA conference, and, and I can recall um, immediately when I got here, I'd never seen so many happy, positive people. Um, I was also a football coach when I first started this, and I've been to lots of football clinics, but people aren't near as happy at football clinics as they are at the WACA conference. They also aren't as forthcoming. Uh, when you come to WACA, people share everything. There's no secrets. Well, that's not really the way it is at a, at a football clinic. We share a little bit, and then we lie about the rest. So that was the first thing is, is I couldn't, I really, in fact, as I listened to workshops, I kind of put down my pencil because they'd already handed out everything we needed to know. And I think more spent time just listening to people. And it was just, it, and still today, even listening today, um, John, by the way, I'm blue right now on my bio spot. So I think that means I'm okay. Um, people share so much information and, and I hope that that's, you know, a part of what I've been able to, uh, to learn from. My mentors, I want to mention a couple of people. First of all, you met Mary. Um, she brought me from my first, to my first WAC conference. Uh, she got us to the first WAS conferences. 
Um, she's been there for me um, in more ways than I can ever explain. Um, I mentioned Susan and Marty. I remember my very first WASP conference. Um, Susan spoke, and no one could be that happy and that positive. Because remember, I came from the coaching world where no one was that happy or that confident. But over all of these years, and we were lucky enough to have a chance to host WASC in 2000, and, and even at 10 or 11 o'clock on the Friday night trying to make sure that everybody was where they needed to be, uh, Susan's always had that same smile. And then in one of my early conference um, activities, listen to Marty talk about ASB law and scare the daylights out of me. Uh, and then by the end of the, of the session, though, walking out feeling like you were going to be okay. Uh, and I, don't, I know many of you do the same thing, but I can send him an email anytime and he sends back information. So thank you for what you do to help. Um, I don't think Pam Kinkel is here, but um, Pam was the advisor at Rogers and, and also is, is a member of this Hall of Fame. And, and uh, we got to do the WASP conference with Pam. She was our, uh, one of our co-chairs. And, and to be in her school, to be at Rogers, to see the cool things that she did with kids, uh, it, she had a huge impact and again 10 o'clock on a Friday night still had a, a positive attitude in getting us through things. My life changed in 2006 because Mary left to become the activities coordinator at Auburn Riverside and um, I kind of knew who uh, was <laughs> carrying me and she just left and so I was a little nervous and, and we uh, hired a young person to be our health teacher and to be our new um, leadership teacher and her name is Katie Henry and Katie's here tonight and when she as soon as she got there uh, I knew we were going to be okay uh, she had incredible enthusiasm and 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 put kids first and and all of these things and then I didn't really know very much about her and then I found out that um, who is her cheer advisor uh, and her leadership teacher, but Pam Kinkella. And her, her dad, Pat Hoonan, was in the Hall of Fame of Athletic Directors. When I first became Athletic Activities Coordinator, the second day I had the job, Pat called and said, if you need anything, I'd never met him, if you need anything, you just give me a call. So that kind of explained why Katie could do what she did immediately. Um, we're lucky in our district because we get amazing support um, in terms of the opportunity for us as advisors to get together. Um, our our uh, district administrator, Rob Swain, sets it up so that we can meet uh, Mary and I uh, and Jenna Thomas, who is the uh, advisor at Auburn Mountain View, and so we get to mentor each other, share information, um, and and those those things are so just important that you have that kind of district support. Um, the other thing I would tell you, especially for those of you that um, are new at this, and but you're going to be doing it for a long time, is to never, um, I guess, to never forget that our mentors can be of any age uh, and any background. Um, I have kids that are my mentors. Um, I have uh, young people that are men my mentors. I have people at other schools that are my mentors uh, that have helped me learn so many things. Um, I, I'm just going to mention, I, I can't tell this whole story because I won't make it, but if the, uh, there's some, a very special group down in Sumner, um, John Norland and Brandon Wenzel, um, who had an, a, a really important impact on my life uh, and my family's life, and they, I learned from them by their actions. Uh, Brandon happens to be one of my former students, and then all of a sudden he was able to help and support my family so um, they're doing amazing incredible things the other mentors that um, some of which are not able to be here tonight are my family members um, my kids um, are not able to be here tonight um, my sons are teaching kids and coaching and uh, our spring sport coaches so are not able to be here um, my daughter is um, at the University of Washington and not able to be here tonight but they are, uh, and those of you who have, who, especially when your kids become high school age, they can really help you out so that you don't look foolish. Um, my kids have helped me understand song lyrics that I didn't get. 
I'm humming a song, and my daughter says, Dad, do you know what that means? Uh, no, sweetie, I don't. And then she would tell me, and then we quit humming that song. Um, it sounded really great. Um, I've asked the, the boys numerous times about things that I was doing, um, and they've always been there for me to make sure that I didn't embarrass myself. Um, my, um, I've had incredible support from my parents who are both in their 80s, um, but when th this award was presented or announced to me in front of our staff, my parents were able to come and, and to see um, even, even now. Um, and I, I, think, I hope that I learned these things, uh, many of the things that I like to do from them. My most important mentor, mentor is my wife, Sue, um, and she is here tonight. And uh, she's always been able to, uh, to keep me on the right track, um, to not let me uh, forget about what was important. Um, she's mentored me as a parent. Um, I learned from my wife that it's not babysitting when it's your own kids. <laughs> um, I mean, you're supposed to know that stuff, but I, use, I said it only once, but um, I learned that telling your son not to throw like a girl is not really a good thing to say, um, but I haven't done that again. Um, but she also is one that's helped look at from the outside, look at our school, look at our kids, what are we doing, has always been able to, to be there, and, and things don't always go perfect, and so she's been there when, when things haven't gone perfect as well. And uh, there's, there's no way to express um, how important she is to me um, and to Auburn High School um, because she's allowed me to spend the time that, that I am able to spend. Um, for the love of the game, there couldn't have been a more perfect theme for me to have this opportunity to be here under that idea because um, I do love this game. Um, and I've been so lucky to be able to do this. If you can believe when I got hired in this job, I made my principal promise that if I didn't like to do it, the next year I could go back to teaching. Um, and then the next year he joked about that he had my schedule ready to go. So, um, and that was 23 years ago, I guess. I'm very honored to receive this award tonight. Um, I, I, again, um, I hope that that my uncomfortable most with receiving this award is that I've learned what's important, um, and that's our kids, um, our students that we work with every day, and and uh, it's an it's been an awesome experience to do what I do. Uh, I'm so lucky to be a part of this, to be involved with WACA, and all of the people. Um, I I want to thank everybody that's involved in this. So thank you very much. Our third and final inductee into the class of 2016 Waka Hall of Fame will be introduced by Lonnie Enney. Please put your hands together for Miss Lindy Stewart. So Lindy started her leadership advising uh, a long time ago. Uh, she wrote a few things down for me. Uh, she uh, attended her first Waka conference in 1986 in Wenatchee. And uh, she served as secretary because the president said, would you do it? She was junior high rep for many years, and she was also the president in 2000 with the theme Lights, Camera, Activities. She worked on Mount Adams staff. She worked as the director of Olympus. She uh, was the advisor, a facilitator at Cascade when it first started. That's a middle-level camp. And that was directed by Susan. And uh, that's where I got my start in leadership, was in that advisor strand also in Marty's eighth grade uh, science class, but still. She also wanted to talk about middle-level regionals. She started back when they used to do only two facilitators on the I-5 corridor. And she um, has a very, very fond memories of this week with Joe Fenbert. Uh, she also worked on the starting in the middle curriculum and also the building leaders for life, which is the high school version. She helped with the NOD conference when uh, our state actually hosted it in Seattle. 
She wanted to thank all the people that she's worked with in her camp experience and uh, also with WASC. She took Shorewood kids there and Bellevue High School kids there in her teaching career. Uh, she retire retired in 2015 after four decades of teaching middle school, junior high, and high school, and also community college. She worked in Coopville, Oak Harbor, Clee Ellum, Snohomish, and Shoreline, and finished uh, with her final 20 years in the Bellevue Public Schools. Uh, she, one of the funny stories uh, is a gal who graduated in 1981, Tony Chipota. Lindy was her cheer advisor, and she talked about in Clean Elm how much the kids loved her. They would actually go to her house after huge snowstorms to help her dig out. So they would go and get her garage taken care of so she could do that and all of her rock walkways. So that tells a lot about Lindy. Pam Schwen and Clay Schwen actually um, nominated her for this award and they said, when you sit down to articulate and calculate the magnitude of her influence on the lives of those uh, she is committed to leadership and, and teaching, they, they tried to do it and they just really couldn't. Lindy's life as a, as a leadership advisor personifies the ripple effect that the servant leaders have in our lives. Lindy's uh, name deserves to join the ranks of those who, have hold, who hold this award and her contributions have helped to build Washington State leadership as we know it. I believe they also named her do their daughter after her. Lindy was unable to make the conference this year. She was planning to be here and I got a text from her yesterday. Uh, her mother, who's 93, uh, is ill and so she was unable to attend. Uh, Lindy is where she needs to be today and loving her mother. So on behalf of Lindy Stewart, thank you for your incredible, this incredible honor of being inducted into the Waka Hall of Fame. And thank you so much to the board and everyone. And thank you so much for supporting Lindy throughout the years. Thank you.